Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Rama, and in today's video, I'll be going over my favorite handheld weapons in Grand Theft Auto Online. So that includes every single weapon that you can use in your scroll wheel, from throwables to heavy weapons, shotguns, everything at our disposal. I'll be going over the deadliest and my favorite of them all. So let's get straight into it. Starting off with the basic weapons, we have the homing launcher. This is not the most effective when it comes to blowing things up. I can very easily pull out a railgun or even an RPG and deal the same, if not more, damage. But the homing launcher does one thing very well, and that is homes on targets. Let's say that there's an oppressor or some sort of jet causing you trouble. Well, all you need to do is aim that homing launcher in the sky, and just the beeping alone will sometimes ward people off. And once you shoot, it will at least buy you time to then pull out a different weapon and do whatever you're doing. So that is one of the really nice things about the homing launcher. It's actually really underrated, and I personally use it whenever somebody is trying to mess with me, especially in a flying vehicle. But if you're dealing with anything like a helicopter or, let's say, a fast-moving car, the railgun is by far the best explosive weaponry in the game. The easiest way to explain why is we can see a car all the way down at the end of the, the runway. And if I shoot my railgun at that car, it will instantly blow it up. Compare that to, let's say, the next best thing, a RPG. Well, shooting an RPG at that car is going to take what, three, four seconds to get there? And let's say you're shooting at something further down the road, well, you can see it takes a very, very long time to get there. And that is just massively important, because if you're shooting at anything that is moving even remotely fast, the railgun is going to be 10,000 times better at shooting at that target than obviously an RPG will. In fact, just a couple months ago when recording a video where I was doing a sail mission with my motorcycle clubs, I had the Dodo, and there was a Hydra chasing me. I managed to land the Dodo really quickly, get out of it, pull out my railgun, and literally snipe the jet out of the sky. The only other weapon you can do that with is the explosive sniper, but this does a bit more damage, so I would highly recommend if you don't have the railgun already to get your hands on one. Now something that is very interesting about the railgun is it does not cut through glass, or when I say doesn't cut through glass, it doesn't blow up on contact with glass. You can see here I've already shot one hole through this car, but I can shoot another right through the glass on this vehicle. If you obviously pull out an RPG or anything that has an explosive rounds, like we can pull out the RPG and you try to shoot it through a car, it's obviously going to blow up on the car. So that is an interesting little quirky thing that the railgun has going for it. I've actually shot at helicopters, and it will go through the glass of the helicopters and sometimes miss if you're really unlucky, but for the most part, you should be completely fine. Now something else that's very effective, but I don't use as much, is the Pump Shotgun Mark II. The Pump Shotgun takes two explosions to blow up a vehicle. That's really quick. The railgun does only take one, but this reloads way faster than the railgun, and it's just really easy to shoot at something. The problem with the pump shotgun is two things. First of all, it has very short range, which means if I'm shooting at a car down here, yeah, I can't hit that car at all. The other problem is that purchasing ammo in your inventory will not resupply your pump shotgun. So you can see I've spent $4,000, none of that goes to the shotgun. So actually resupply, I have to go over to any sort of MOC or weapon workshop and then I can purchase the ammo there. It kind of sucks to be completely honest, so that's the major reason why I don't use something like the pump shotgun. I actually prefer the railgun over that. So next up I wanted to talk about other heavy weapons that are pretty solid. We have the Widowmaker and the minigun. Now personally, I don't like the Widowmaker that much because for some reason, wherever you're aiming at, you can see it shoots a bit lower. And you can see that while trying to just shoot at the glass with the Widowmaker. If we pull out something like the minigun and shoot at the glass, it always hits where you're aiming. So because of that, I personally believe that the Widowmaker is much worse than the minigun. But if you're a newer player, you can purchase the Widowmaker instantly where you have to wait till you're, I think, level 1 20 to get the minigun. So that's, I guess, your reasoning to why you would want to get the Widowmaker over the minigun. But once you've unlocked the minigun, just buy it. It's way better than the Widowmaker. Now, why is the minigun so good? Well, first of all, it's obviously just continuous fire. I can keep shooting the minigun over and over and over until I literally run out of all 10,000 rounds. 
that's pretty huge. Not only that, but we can obviously shoot the minigun at a normal car here, and it will blow that car up very quickly, as we can see. So the minigun not only does an insane amount of damage, but it is super deadly. If you hit somebody with the burst around, it will almost instantly kill them. And, as we can see, it instantly shoots through armored glass. This is how long it normally takes to shoot through an armored glass panel. And the minigun, one single shot, well, I guess we have to, like, aim, but there you go. One single shot, and it cuts directly through armored glass so because of this you don't really need to waste your ammo on any you know armor piercing rounds you can just pull out a minigun and literally instantly demolish anything in front of you so the minigun is super super solid it's definitely something that a lot of people use especially tryhards and it's got a bad connotation going for it but there's a reason why it's just a super solid weapon it's very hard to go up against and when doing any sort of missions it's really solid the only problem with the minigun is it's very expensive to refill just that short burst was about a thousand dollars it's not the most ridiculous price tag but when you're shooting this for like a minute in a mission or something like that you're probably gonna blow through maybe eight thousand seven thousand dollars worth of ammo so that is something to keep in mind some other very solid weapons i thought we'd talk about we got the heavy sniper mark ii now i personally don't have explosive rounds on my heavy sniper the very simple reasoning is because of the fact that the explosive rounds again just like the pump shotgun are not able to be reloaded in your interaction menu. I like it much, much better to just be able to always have ammo in my sniper, especially because Rockstar has changed it, so now if you get a body hit with the Heavy Sniper Mark II, it will always insta-kill whoever you're shooting at, which is actually really nice. So, I personally really like the Heavy Sniper. Like, sure, it's good if you want explosive rounds to deal with jets in the sky, but I think it's just as easy to pull out the railgun for the most part, and you will very easily deal with people in front of you. Some other weapons we have that are really solid well, we've got the, uh, what is this? The up and atomizer. I always call it the ray gun. But the up and atomizer is really solid for, first of all, dealing with Oppressor Mark II players. It's got a burst radius, and it's free to shoot the ammo. It really doesn't cost anything, and new players can get it. And essentially, if you hit any Oppressor Mark II with the up and atomizer, it will send them flying off of it. This is the case for any motorcycle. So if there's somebody trying to mess with you on a motorcycle, just shoot the up and atomizer, and you will completely demolish them. As well, this is a great weapon to use if your car ever gets stuck. Let's say it's stuck on a tree. Well, you can easily just shoot the up and atomizer and instantly get it stuck out of that position. I can't tell you how many times I have done the ending scene for the Pacific Standard Heist and the boat has gotten stuck because we've rushed it and we've had to use the up and atomizer to finish it. So it's just a great thing you always want to have at your disposal. Other things, obviously the sticky bomb's great. Whenever you're in a vehicle or a car, you can just throw sticky bombs out of the window and deal with people around you. Something that people don't realize is super effective is this. We have the flare gun. Now, why is the flare gun so effective? Well, let's say you're inside your car having a normal, fun, leisurely drive, and then some douchebag rolls up to you trying to shoot you with missiles. Well, the best thing about the flare gun is if you literally launch flares into the air, the missiles will no longer chase you, and they will start chasing those flares. So essentially what you can do is you can have one or two people in a car when you're doing a sail mission, and literally just keep launching flares into the air, and the missiles that are shot at you will always be distracted. And if you have two people in the vehicle, it means that one of you can keep launching flares while the other one purchases more ammo, and then you can keep launching them over and over. Because of that, the flare gun is an incredibly underrated weapon. And it's not necessarily a weapon, it's a defensive item. But it is one of the best defensive items in the game due to the fact that you can just keep launching them over and over and over. Other weapons I would say are really good. We've obviously got the service carbon. This is something that everybody has wanted to get their hands on for years, and Rockstar has finally added it. It's got a really good rate of fire. It's really accurate, as you can see. It's really comfortable to use, and it's just a great weapon. It's always going to kill on headshot, so it's a super, super solid weapon. I really like the ball pup. It's got a much faster rate of fire, and it's got a really, really small spread as well. It's really good if you want to get quick headshot kills, but the service carbine does hit harder. So if you want to hit hard, go for the service carbine. But I really, really like the ball pop just because of how fast a trade of fire is. Something else I think is really nice is actually the uh, heavy rifle. This weapon has virtually no spread whatsoever, and it's a bit slower on movement, as you can see, if you were to compare it to something like the ball pup rifle, which is super fast. But it's still a really good weapon because of the fact that it hits super dang hard. It's pretty similar to what I would say of an M16. So those are the best, I would say, on it 
least your rifles. When it comes to other weapons, I would say the Combat MG Mark II is insane. The normal Combat MG is really good as well, but I just think the Mark II is much better. First of all, it hits like a tank. It's not as devastating as the minigun, but as you can see, it blows up cars very, very quickly. Plus, because it features 200 rounds, you can just keep on shooting and shooting and shooting without literally ever needing to reload. That's something that I absolutely love about the MG. Plus, it's decently accurate. It's not like the most accurate weapon. You can obviously see there's a lot of spread with the fire, but it's so many rounds that you can just keep on shooting, plus it reloads really fast, unlike games in COD and other games where you have to wait for them to pull out the pouch, then choo choo choo. It's, it's just a really good weapon in general. Uh, other weapons I would say are really, really nice. Well, when it comes to pistols, we now have the Tactical SMG, which can be shot inside your car, and it holds 60 rounds. I mean, the Tactical SMG is literally just an instant win, so I would highly recommend to get your hands on the Tactical SMG, one of the newest weapons added into the game. You have to get it from the gun van, but if you're inside of a car, you can instantly pull out your tactical SMG with 60 rounds and shoot out of it. This is the only weapon in the game that can now feature 60 rounds inside of a car. You can feature 30 rounds of something like the SMG, but it's not 60. So I would highly, highly recommend to get your hands on something like the tactical SMG. Apart from that, there's really not much else. I mean, there's some really good shotguns. We obviously got the assault shotgun, which is really good for dealing with close proximity targets. It deals insane damage, as you can see. And yeah, it's a really good weapon for dealing with close proximity. But apart from that, I really can't say there's much else in the game that I would recommend to get your hands on. I know we talked about a lot of weapons there, but that's really just about the best weaponry in Grand Theft Auto Online. Something I've actually started to like a bit is the Unholy Hellbringer. It's just really good because you never have to reload, like, ever. You can just keep shooting and shooting and shooting at your opponents, but it's not the most accurate, and it's not the deadliest, but it is still a pretty fun weapon. So, at the end of the day, this was just a video that I wanted to talk about all the weapons in the game. The ones that I think that are good, the ones that I think maybe aren't the best, and yeah. So let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree, but I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.